I thought we could start with uh, you guys telling a bit about your band. What's like the need to know about Psychotic? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the band is active for like almost 10 years, I guess. Um, they started as under a different name, like Natural Born Grinders uh, was more kind of a rap, uh, death metal, grindcore, technical mix. Um, so it was maybe 20. Yeah. And then later on, like the day, we, we changed the name um, because we wanted to become straighter. Um, and then like we, we, we decided to ch change the name in 2016 uh, to Psychotic. And we released our debut in 2017. It's self-titled. Uh, it contains 10 tracks, I guess. Was 10, 10, ten tracks? Yeah, 10, ten tracks. Um, and currently we're, we're working on new material, um, which we we're gonna release hopefully in the next two years. Uh, uh, takes a lot of time, like always. Hopefully uh, next year, yeah. maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. Before going to the upcoming music, let's, uh, dig a bit deeper up into your music. Uh, well, urban style. Uh, brutality, so what does that mean? How would you describe your music in your own words? Yeah, um, like you said, most of us have been active for a long time. Like, um, actually, he founded the band like 15 years ago when we had lots of lineup changes. And every time a member enters or leaves, you know, there's always new inspiration and everybody listens to different music. And um, I think ultimately we just try to be as imageless as possible. Like, you know, if you see a lot of death metal bands or technical death metal bands, they always seem to be very serious, very dark, very sinister. And uh, we try to avoid that by saying we're just guys from a big city, from a big urban place. And yes, that's out of stone. Yeah, a desert out of stone, a stone desert, mm -hmm. you might say. And that's the main influence for urban style brutality you know because there's so much shit going on in the city and it's like it's a rough rough place like especially berlin if you grew up here and like we we all we are from berlin born and raised and um so we've seen a lot of shit and we but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and that's what we uh, we express ourselves in, in the music and that's why we choose the extreme style of metal and um yeah, and so that's our urban style brutality. And a little bit mixing. You need a mic. Ah, sorry. No, I'm oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and a little bit mixing of the genres because Berlin is pretty multicultural. Uh, versatile. So yeah. we do a little bit rap and a little bit funk and a little bit blues influences in, in it. We put in it. Do black metal, death metal, yeah. whatever. You know, so. Many influences, many thoughts and minds have uh, influenced this project, I guess. Yeah, talking about those thoughts, uh, what are your songs about? Uh, Maybe in the upcoming album? Um, on the upcoming album, like we, we have, um, yeah, lots of like mental stuff. I, I'm very interested in psychological things like how the the mind works and what drives people not sometimes um like serial killers or or people who yeah do stuff that that is unexpected and you you see what 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 drives those people and i have like experienced myself some like yeah depression burnouts and stuff like that like psychological things and i i dig deeper into that and i i i write like the lyrics are what what eats me up like my inner demons and uh and there's uh, lots of different stuff um but we also have uh songs about lovecraft i i'm i'm a, I'm a big lovecraft fan like a cthulhu uh uh myth so um but the other stuff is more like the, the the corrupt system um religion like but not the good part of it so um 
yeah that's that's we all combine that what 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 uh what what uh drives us to to what makes us angry or makes us sad or makes it makes us happy actually i think it has a societal aspect not so much a political aspect but a societal aspect how how is society at this current point and what's the influence on us and how do we feel it and what's the emotion coming out of it i think that's yeah yeah you talked about a lot of different musical influences so how do you write music as a band yeah he's for a it's different very very different sometimes i come up with a riff and then we meet in in the rehearsal room and then we just jam out of it and vibe on it and then there's a new song coming sometimes he has a groove as a drummer he comes to me and says hey i have this groove pattern in my head let's program it on a on a computer and then we write a demo demo like that it's very different and you know as we mentioned before it's not so much of a um um of a, of a how to, how to say that um the process is very very unique in a way that inspiration is not always there inspiration just comes from societal aspects from parts in life and if if, if the inspiration comes then we just let it out and the way we let it out is very different each way so it's hard to say how we write songs. It's sometimes it's jamming, sometimes it's thinking about it before we even write a note. It's very intuitive. different, intuitive. It's, it's very intuitive. intuitive. Yeah, and it comes from the outside inspiration. You know, mm -hmm. every time something happens, something good happens, something mm -hmm. bad happens. There's some kind of inspiration, and then we'll try to make a song out of it. Whatever. Yeah, I think the most important question is: in which stage is the upcoming album? songs are written um it's about eight or nine i guess and we're planning some interludes so songs are completely written drums are recorded um i'm editing the drums and recording guitars and i'm at this point right now so at this point it's all on me and it might take a little while <laughs> because i'm a lazy ass motherfucker no i'm sorry <laughs> yeah so yeah i i have to uh write a couple of couple of lyrics are already done um like we have two songs uh titled already it's um before alpha and beyond omega um that is like the 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 theme is like to think not only what what is what is what the you don't you don't think in in cupboards like like that uh that people think there's only a and there is that so uh, there's only the the beginning and the end so there must be something before that and after that like the the aftermath um so and there's another song uh oblivious void which we are gonna gonna play tonight and yeah this one is more about feeling empty or like yeah getting uh yeah suppressed by by everything that that from the the, the outer world or like the, the 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 society and like feeling empty and yeah you have to struggling with your inner self uh yeah that's the the oblivion yeah. well as you said uh eponymous uh debut album came out in 2017 or in bandcamp 2018 uh, <laughs> so um uh, how has your sound evolved how would uh, how would you compare the new material to the debut album it's definitely more extreme so we're, we're, we 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 definitely getting uh it it's a bit faster um but still still versatile uh some yeah, yeah some some songs are way faster than the old ones and um <laughs> but we we still try to keep to the roots well like yeah. like to stick to the roots to like in the core it's still extreme metal like all the types you can think of like i don't i don't want to i don't want to define it as one kind of yeah. extreme metal yeah, it's all it's... kinds of extreme metal and i think what we didn't try on the first record we tried on the second one like there's a lot of mixing styles and and uh, and, and types of music and on this new record we tried some new things that we didn't try on the first one like leftover ideas so to say um so yeah it's a bit different it's more experimental i guess and it's longer I hope <laughs> because last time we had 10 songs, but the album is only 
36 minutes or something. <laughs> so I guess this time is going to be longer. <laughs> Let's see. Not functions does? No. Yeah, I think it would be cool if you could uh, maybe tell like the background story for one of the upcoming songs that will be on the album, like uh, to somehow showcase the experimental side of what I just said, like the, the last album was pretty extreme, but there was no like really calm parts, no somber, easy listen parts, you know, and this time we tried it and I'm not going to spoil which song it's going to be because that's going to destroy the experience. But we have a song that is very calm. At least it starts very calm, <laughs> you know, and we never did this before. So um, on the on the first album, we had an outro that is very calm, but that's on the end of the album. And this time we're going to do it different and have a whole song that's kind of chill. <laughs> Let's say. Yeah. You want to share a story of another song? No. <laughs> No. Yeah, no, let's no, let's not spoil anything. Yeah, I mean we we could spoil a lot of shit right now, but <laughs> do we want to? I mean, it's, it's okay like, for me. I mean, what we can say is on the last album there was a song with the rap part, and uh, I think we're going to repeat that. So we're going to bring some rap lyrics to extreme death metal music. So yeah, I think that's gonna happen. Something else? No. All right. It's fine. Well, you guys must have a reason about this uh, from your point of view. How is Berlin as a city for like a smaller bands at the moment? How has the underground scene bounced back after pandemic? You have the most experience. <laughs> um, yeah, especially after the pandemic. It, it was a rough start, like when everything opened up again. Um, it was hard for because all there was limitations everywhere like like every club like though they had a like a uh, limitation on people and said like oh we can only let like 50 people in or something and it was hard to book shows it was really hard to book shows um so but now it's getting better but yeah now we see like some other clubs they have to close because they they don't they can can do the financial or can handle the financial uh, point anymore and so yeah it's but besides of that like like the, the the big shows the big tours uh everything that comes to Berlin like like the bands from from America or, or somewhere else uh, so like that is still going and I think it's going good and people are more willing to pay more for the ticket and support the band uh, than before um but yeah i think it, it's it's getting better but it's sad to see what that the local bands yeah that's what i said and what, what i was going to say like it's sad to see that the, it's harder for the local bands to to um to yeah like uh, to to get a get a hold of of good gigs and like you have to do everything underground i mean there there's just there's lots of support and lots of lots of people uh who are coming to the shows um but yeah besides of that is um, it's getting better um what fascinates me it's that it basically has always been like that like the the underground scene has never been financially you know wealthy or you know has never been financially supported so they always had to go with no money with low budgets or no budgets at all and they always found a way to do it it's getting harder and harder but they're still finding ways to do it like this festival here and it's even for free so that's fascinating to me that although it's getting harder and harder and everything gets more expensive people still find a way to put through their passion and to organize things like that and that's really cool yeah, as you said, it's uh, Nox A Carnival's actually 10th year, so 10 years of Nox A Carnival. So what are your thoughts on this event? Uh, we played it last year as uh, uh, as well with another band, with Yehaktet, and uh, we never heard about it actually. Last time we found, last year we found out about it and thought it was really cool, especially that it's for free and like community-wise. And uh, yeah, so we know Dominic, the the woman who organizes it. So um, this time she asked us and we were uh, very happy to participate because, you know, we support little things like that. People with passion, no budget, low budget, 
and I, they're still doing it and it's great so yeah i i know back from uh, when we was still in, in the drugstore uh in schöneberg and um i thought it was, it was a good good place for especially like for for berlin local underground bands uh to uh get a stage or and uh especially that it is for free uh so the people they they don't have to think about oh the ticket is too pricey or something it's too expensive i can't go so there's no excuse and um, the people that uh want to see the bands or want to support in any other way they come and um i i really like the idea and uh i think it's great yeah it's pretty awful what happened in uh Potsdamer Straße. um Well, going back to Psychotic, of course, so album coming up. So what are your kind of future plans or should we say hopes and dreams like in the best case scenario? My biggest hope was that we keep 666 followers on Facebook, <laughs> but today somebody else followed. So now it's 676 and I'm very disappointed. No. <laughs> Six, seven, yeah. I mean, yeah. actually, Like, you know, there's actually no plan where I think the next biggest goal is to release this album. We don't even know when it's going to happen. I mean, ideally we do it this year, but I doubt that. So let's say next year uh, and then we'll just see what the impact is, like what the feedback is, how people like it. And if we can book some shows on it and uh, sell some units, it's all about the money now. And uh, yeah, in the end, we don't really have a plan. We'll just... You know, it's but, first mean, of all, it's a passion project. But, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, that what what would be great, like, to, it is is to find a label and get some bigger shows, and um, so that at some point we don't have to push our own money all the time in it, like, and get something uh, back. I mean, it's like we are a diy band but sometimes it it is good to have a label in the back uh, who supports you um i mean we know like death metal that's not a not a thing where you can you're you're getting rich or something we, we all do it for the passion not for the money and um but yeah it would, it would be great to to get more geeks outside of berlin or um like yeah or a different country um Yeah, that will be cool. Present this music to lots of people. That's a goal. Yeah, sorry for my bad English. Uh, to keep up the band alive, to keep up crazy music, and it's like therapy to wow. write, to create songs like we do. Yeah. For me, is a uh, passion and uh, for mental health. It's an outlet. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, Venti. Venti, uh, um, how do you say it? Vent some steam or, like, or something? De de decompressing, yeah. Decompression. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about the band from the start for the upcoming album. So uh, just for, you know, the urban style brutality, it's really appealing uh, thing to me. So what's the next step of urban style brutality? Like... Um, I mentioned that before, like trying things that we didn't try before. Like we we try to make use of every inspiration that we have. And uh, if somebody comes up with a new idea for a new style or for mixing some some styles, it's always welcome, you know. And uh, we're just trying to experiment. So, and you know, this city is very very versatile in its creativity and its people in its societal aspects. And this is all part of the creation process, you know. Well, I think, like, oh, yeah, it's it's the thing when you're getting older and you you're getting quieter. I think the next step will be a suburban friendly neighborhood. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, sitting in the yard. What's and... with the brutality? Suburban friendly grill session, yeah. barbecue session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's the next step. Yeah. With, with that yeah. little influence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 